Hello everyone, Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com. This is Trading Simplified. A few weeks back when we did our last show, and I guess a week before that, I was talking about acceptance and getting into the trading psychology. And we're going to come back to that. But all I like to do is show you things as they are happening with as many real-time examples as possible. And I've been talking about the IPO bull market on and off all year. And I've been actually talking about the IPO bull market going back six or seven years when I first did an IPO course. But anyway, there's some great examples now. And I want to show you a new mystery chart, which is an IPO, shocking. And then some recent IPOs and show you a neat little pattern to trade them. And then also, if we have time, and if not this week, and I certainly will continue it next week, I'd like to jump in to stockcharts.com and show you how to find some IPOs to trade. Now, housekeeping, I do take requests, as I've been saying quite often lately, due to the nature of the time frame of the show and it being pre-recorded, what I have been doing is covering those requests in the weekend charts, which is Thursday nights at DaveLandry.com. Usually you can find the link on the homepage. If I forget to put it up for something, for some reason, go to DaveLandry.com slash webinar, and you can register there. Even if it's an older date, it, it will be the current web, webinar link that's sent out. If you would like the slides from this show, which includes a lot of rules and a lot of trading psychology to money management, etc., go to DaveLander.com slash stock charts. I'll also include a little, all three of my books for free and a link to all of these shows so you can watch them if you're having trouble sleeping at night. Just don't operate heavy machinery afterwards. I borrowed that line from Greg Morris. And if you need to contact me, DaveLander.com slash contact. All right, let's jump into it. When I did my IPO course, I guess it was in 2014, it was weird because there was a bull market in IPOs like 2011, and I'm like, oh, this is great. And then 2012, 2013, and then I, I kept thinking as soon as I do a course, the IPO bull market is going to end, but it just kept going and going and going. So finally, 2014, I finally got around to doing one, and I wasn't sure what to call it. And then I got to thinking, it's like, well, they're really a technician's dream because you don't have overhead supply and a lot of things to worry about. You can't short them right away. At least the, the layman can't short them. I suppose a market maker specialist or something might be able to uh, short them. But for the most part, you can't short them. And the reason they're a technician's dream is one of the biggest reasons is that if a market's going to go from A to B to C, and B is somewhere in between A and C, it's going to have to pass through B along the way. And it's one of the patterns I discovered called the buy at B. The other great thing is a lot of times they come public and they just die and die. I was doing a presentation a few years back and I showed example after example of stocks that have come public and just absolutely imploded. And if we get to the live charts, I'll show you a couple of these that are beginning to implode already some of these hot ipos that just came out doordash airbnb etc and somebody's like well you're making a great case for shorting ipos it's like well you can't really short them or they're very hard to short and uh, that's not the case the case is that a lot of times they come public and go down and you're thinking well dave why is that good well it's good because you don't have to put any capital in the harm's way and it's the technician's dream will rogers once said if they don't go up, don't buy them. And that's pretty much what you could do with IPOs, with the little caveats, of course. So die, die, very common pattern. One of the other common patterns is a fly in the die. And remember, we're traders. Now, I've gotten into a couple of IPOs. I think I'm long one from last July, if memory serves, APG. And I hope next year at this time, I'm still long that APG. Now, just because I'm a trader doesn't mean I won't hold things longer term. It's interesting. I was reading a book called Devil Take the Hindmost, and it's a book about the speculation throughout history. And it's interesting the way they talk about an investor is someone who tries to figure out the life cycle, the entire life cycle, or the entire life of the investment, something to get in and hold forever that's going to be great. The trader just wants to figure out the emotional psychology of that particular market and that it will continue long enough for him to prosper. And that's what happens more often than not with the IPOs. You have this, what I call the fly 
and the die. They take off. There's a lot of excitement of the promise of the future. And the reason I use that carefully worded word, promise, is because most of the time the promise never materializes. But who cares? If they go up, we can make a lot of money on them. By the way, the reason I use a sardine goes back to the story of the trading of the sardines. Long story endless. They were trading sardines. It was a sardine bull market. Everybody's all excited about these little tins of sardines. One guy bought the high tech, went home, opened them up, and they were rotten. And he tracked the guy down and sold to him. He said, ah, you silly fool. Those are for trading, not eating. So you want to make sure you unload your IPOs when they begin to stink. And that's just a stop and a trailing stop. We'll do that for you. Now, the gist of a buy B, there's a lot more to it than this. But if you, kind of, if you can wrap your head around this, then I think you're going to be do, doing just great. We don't buy an IPO till at least five days have passed. And I say that over and over and over again. So let's say it's Monday. We won't buy that IPO until at least Friday, provided, of course, it triggers on a Friday by closing at a new closing high at B, so to speak, with a few caveats again. No matter how many times I say that, my Facebook lights up, my email lights up. Hey, Dave, what about DoorDash? Hey, Dave, what about Airbnb? Well, they haven't even come public yet, at least when I got those messages. And then a couple of those messages came first day public or second day they've been public. And it's like, no, we have to wait at least until day five. Now, here's a very simple rule, but people get a little tripped up in this. If day one sets the high for the first week, obviously you won't know on day one, but let's say on day four, the highest day of the week so far was day one, then that is the high that it must also close above. So we need a new closing high, also must close above the day one high if, and actually I'll go through a few examples, this will, this will make more sense, but if day one sets the high for the week. As a general statement, stocks greater than $20, I, I have the $20 rule, I like stocks less than $20, and in more recent times, I've been a little bit more lenient with that. You'll see a few examples where I go maybe $25 or so. But as a general statement, I try to find those that are less than 20 bucks. And my feeling here is if they're priced too high, they're going to die. And as I said in the IPO course, one of the things is that the underwriter needs to leave a little meat on the bone for all the people who, or the market maker, however you want to look at, look at it, who invested in the IPO pre-IPO so they can get off the hook with their venture capital or whatever, however you want to look at that. Now, if it's above $20 and you're doing a buy at B type of setup, I like to have a little bit of a momentum filter, a little bit past what I want to cover today, but basically it's not that complicated. I'm looking for Landry Light above the five-day SMA for that. And there are a few details. You have to have a pretty good range. Volume is kind of tricky. We could spend a lot of time talking about that. We're not using volume for predictive characteristics, but we're using volume to tell us if it's liquid enough to trade. And you have to look at each individual day and see how much volume there is. Also, you need to look at the spread to see how wide it is. If it has a one-point spread or two-point spread, it's probably not worth trading. Although sometimes you have to just close close your eyes and let them take off without you when that happens. It's just not worth worth. The risk, you have that built-in loss going in. What's the story, fat or glory? That's a little tricky to kind of flesh out. Ideally, I want to see something that has a little bit of excitement behind it. We're along Academy Sports, and I couldn't get that excited about the Buy at B setup there, as I'll show you in just a few minutes. But I did take a secondary setup following a little bit closer to my core methodologies a pattern i call the first deep retracement which is an ipo pattern but it's a little bit pullback in nature a little bit more like what i would normally do again with, with a more established issue again with the core methodology so ideally i do want to see some sort of excitement and it doesn't have to be they're going to cure covid or solve the world's hunger problems or something it could be something as simple as maybe a burrito maker or something but it has to ha seem to have like a little bit of a fad to it, or at least some kind of excitement to it. Lately, these SPOCs, as special purpose acquisition companies, have been doing really well, although I think the bloom is off the rose there. That's another conversation because they're beginning to flood the market with them. But at least over the last several months, they've been fantastic on the IPO side, and there's some kind of excitement there. Whether it's a real excitement, or, or I should say, whether the promise of the future ever materializes or not, who 
The heck knows, probably won't. I've got one today I'm probably going to get stopped out of, but I had a good ride. Now, Oryx T came public in one, two, three, four days. So we know at this point in time that the high was set on day one, especially by day five. It just kind of came public and kind of died out a little bit. Didn't look like anything great was going to happen there. So we need a new closing high and it must close above the day one high. Now, a second ago, I talked about range. In this particular case, the range was a little too narrow for my taste, but when it closed above that day one high, triggering an entry, it's a market on close, by the way, you actually enter the stock on the close when you have a signal and it must close at a new high. And it's a little tricky because you don't know if it's going to close at the high until after the fact. And I've gotten in one or two early and sometimes that's hurt me. And sometimes it's paid off nicely. And I have one example of that in a few minutes. So anyway, we talked about this one before. It was a buy at B. And luckily, sometimes this is the beauty of this pattern. Sometimes in after hours trading, and this is where you can't look a gift horse in the mouth. Sometimes in a case like this, I was looking for two points and I got it. And after hours trading, came back in, stopped me out for what I call it better than a poke in the eye trade. Especially if you play the annualization game. So here's another one, ANNX. This was off. Uh, uh, this was last summer. One, two, three, four. So day four, we see we have a new high that's set. Okay, and the closing high is going to have to close above that closing high. Notice the day one high is not the new high for the week. Okay, day four is actually new high for the week. So we don't even worry about it closing in a new high. We just need a new closing high in this particular case. Any close above that would signal a buy signal. And I bought it market on close here. And let's see what happened. Now, on that particular day, it shot up. And it's a case where you, instead of being a cheerleader, and one thing I have to be a little bit better at, <laughs> caught myself doing this morning once, is uh, I think I read one of the Market Wizards or one of those books. It's like, hey, you reach for your calculator. Make sure you reach for your mouse and flip out of some shares. In this particular case, I hit my initial profit target. came right back in, but so what? And then it took off from there. And then it, it came back in and stopped me on a remainder. Now, I want to show you some current examples, a mystery chart. And those current examples or the methodology in action, in action with IPOs. Now, here's our mystery chart for the week. It's an IPO. The market has taken off and it's pulled back very deeply. And this is what I call a first deep retracement. Entries up here. The stop is down here. Now, keep in mind that the parameters were set before today's action. Okay. So tomorrow for this setup, Wednesday, December 16, 2020, that buy line will probably be or buy area will be a little bit lower. And the stop will be a little lower, as will the initial profit target. Now, what's interesting here is the buy at B pattern, one, two, three, four, five. You could be long in as little as five days. And I call this a pioneer setup, although some buy at Bs do take a few weeks and maybe even a few months to trigger. For the most part, it's a pioneer setup and you're getting in really, really, really early. And like the American pioneers, and that's why I call it a pioneer setup, you're either going to get the arrows... In, the, in your back or you're going to get the gold. Now what's interesting is we actually have a secondary setup, a first deep retracement, something that's not quite as pioneer because it takes a few more days to set up, sometimes a few more weeks to set up than the buy at B at its earliest, again, five days. But here we have a setup where the buy, and B, the buy at B has not triggered and now we have a first deep retracement. So I just find that kind of interesting. So that's the mystery chart for this week. Here's a former mystery chart. We talked about this one before. Again, another first deep retracement. I am still long this stock. This was in my trading service. If you need to, or if you'd like to take a look at all these uh, older trading services, I'll put a link up here. Now, here we go. ALGM, uh, based on a 100K account, you'd buy 500 shares. Those are the parameters. So your buy would be right here. Your stop would be down here. Initial profit target up here. So let's see what happens. We get triggered an entry. It meanders a little bit, but then begins to take off. And fortunately, 
hits the initial profit target. Hasn't done a whole lot since, but what we're going to do is we're going to trail that stop higher. So barring overnight gaps, we have the stop at break even, right around where we entered, or exactly where we entered. And we're going to hold on and see what happens. And now hopefully, and there's that word you should never use in trading, but hopefully we'll be talking about this one next year. It'll be a great example of a longer term trend following. Now, you might have noticed a buy a D in this. One, two, three, four, five. Now, I did go long on this day here. Now, that's a case where the market was much higher. And if you go back in and watch a week of charts back uh, early in November, you'll see that it was trading around right here. And I was thinking, oh, I'm going to go ahead and get in because it looks like it's going to close at a new closing high. And then by the close, I was already a loss and came back in. Fortunately, it took off from there. And I was able to get out half. And then a little bit more than a scratch on the remainder. I think about a half a point on the remainder. Better than a poke in the eye. And, you know, if you get in some of these and you're out in two, three days, you get stopped out. And overall, you make about 1% on your account. You know, do that a few times a year or 100 times a year and you're going to be doing pretty good. That's not where the real money is. The real money is in the longer term trend following. And I did re-enter here and it was also a service recommendation on that particular day. Now here's the ASO that I was talking about earlier. The range was kind of small for the buy at B pattern and it's it's a retail sports sporting goods store. I just couldn't get that excited about it. But you know, maybe there is a story here. Maybe this is something COVID related that I'm missing. I don't know. I know that I gave away, I just didn't feel like moving them. I gave away all my dumbbells when I moved and and I joined a gym, you know, and because we downsized and I was trying to get rid of some of my junk. Well, now I would kill to have those dumbbells back. Anyway, before I digress too far, maybe there's a story there. I don't know, but sometimes it's, it's kind of good without confusing the issue to fact, with facts to see if there's a bit of a story in these IPOs. However, once they make a secondary pattern like a hot IPO pullback or a first deep retracement like we're looking at here again, then you just go after the pattern if the pattern is there and you forget about the reasoning and let the charts tell you what to do. We do the same thing actually for the most part with the buy a B, but ideally, especially if the range is a little small, we want to have something behind the reason that we're buying it. Now, again, I don't want to talk out of both sides of my mouth. As a pure technician, let me rewind that. As a pure technician, if I have lots of range on a buy at B, I'll take it, okay? If it's not something like a stodgy retail company or a stodgy bank or something like that. Now, again, we've got a nice thrust higher here, followed by a deep, deep, deep retracement. This is on the cusp of a little bit too deep, but I figured it was worth going after still. Any more additional pullback, you would have had 100% retracement. At that point, I would pass. And again, it's a first deep retracement. The buy was here, the stop was here. That little spreadsheet I just showed you, a little snippet from the spreadsheet, is my trading service. And if you go in and watch the trading service for, I guess, like November 19th or 20th or 23rd, you'll see this exact setup and you'll see that exact spreadsheet. And going through those, if I say so myself, I think is a great idea. You get to see the methodology in action, warts and all. Here's the thing about trading. You have to follow your plan. Notice this setup really failed miserably. This position failed miserably for a week or so. And then finally begin to take off. We're still not to that IPT just yet. Although two days ago, it was kind of a little frustrating. It was kind of frustrating. I was telling everybody on my Facebook group that, hey, we're at the IPT pre-market. And I didn't bother to take the partial profit. So shame on me for that. I think it was a little greedy wanting to squeeze out a little bit more in the open, which did not happen. But anyway, the point I was trying to get to here is you can't micromanage yourself out of trades. If you get stopped out, so be it. Drop an F-bomb if you have to. I actually had to give away my F-bomb shirt yesterday. It was too... <laughs> Fat man doesn't fit in it anymore. Thank you, COVID. Anyway, so, so far so good. And I hate to use the word hope, but I'm hoping to hit that initial profit target on that one. Now, here's one that I'm also long, which I may have mentioned in the past. I think I did. Day one, day two. Now, day two makes a new high, an all-time high for the IPO, right? Two days in. So, it takes out the day one high. We're no longer worried about the day one high. In fact, we're no longer worried about any highs in general. 
we're looking for a new closing high. So day three, we have a new closing high. Let's take a look at day four. Now day four is a little bit lower, so we have to close above the day three high. We're not worried about a close above the day three high. We just want a new closing high. And on day five, we get it. Now I don't remember the days of the week, but let's just say day one was Monday. Well, day five is Friday, and day five is Friday. So you would enter on the close on Friday on the first week of trading, but you would ignore this stock again for the first five days and only on day five if it closes at a new closing high. I just saved you a lot of money on a lot of IPOs. You're welcome. And this is where I actually bought in. Now, if we fast forward to today, you could see that I'm pretty much underwater or still underwater in this particular trade, but it's beginning to wake up a little bit. And like I said a few weeks back when I showed you this one, so far not so good. My stop is way down here, okay, giving it ample breathing room. And there's still hope, okay? So I'm going to stay the course. We'll see what happens. Starting to wake up a little bit today. Maybe it'll take off. Now, keep in mind, when an IPO makes a new closing high, because there are no shorts, everyone is happy. Everyone who bought the IPO is happy. And that's a great place to be. And guess what? Those who didn't buy the IPO, they might feel a little pressure to jump in. The FOMO might cause them to want to enter. Now, here's a bank and... Well, Dave, you said, what's the story? Fat of glory. I know. And it was hard for me to buy a bank, but the range began to expand on the day it triggered. So it had ample range. I felt like it had decent range, 30% range or something like that. And then also, if you notice, day one did set the high for the week. So it has to close above that high too. And in this particular case, again, it's kind of boring. It's a bank, you know, oh, I really don't want to buy a bank. But I happened to notice in doing my nightly analysis that banks were the hottest sector in hot towns. Sometimes value becomes momentum. John Lewis gave a great speech back before this whole COVID thing hit back in the fall of 2019. And I was speaking at the TSAASF, San Francisco Technical Analysis Society meeting. And John Lewis talk, talked about how sometimes value becomes momentum. Well, all these years, I've been trading energy stocks when they scrape bottom and begin taking off and banks and all these other stocks. I never really realized that, hey, that's value becoming momentum. So I noticed that banks were really hot and acting more like biotechs than banks. And I saw this IPO set up and I said, you know what, Dave, close your eyes, take the signal. And I did. And some of my peeps did too. I saw you guys talking about it earlier in the Facebook group. So shout out to you guys. Sold half of it, still in trend following modes, correcting a little bit today. In fact, it's forming a TKO for those who are looking for a possible re-entry or new entry on this one. And trailing the stop higher, so we're going to see what happens. And again, here comes that word, hold. But hopefully a year from now, I'll still be talking about this one. Okay, another one that I'm recently long. One, two, three, four. What do we What do we notice so far? Day one has set the high for the week. Day five, nothing to do yet, Okay. So since the high was set on day one, we're going to have to close above that high. And there we go. Closes above the high. I bought market on close on December 1st. Stop is way down here. If you could stomach it, put a stop below the low. If it makes an all-time low, you know you're wrong. People are like, where do you put a stop? Well, put it someplace where you know your pattern has failed, should, God forbid, it be reached. And notice this thing failed miserably. Now, the buy it be, I have to say takes a big leap of faith. I showed you a couple, or at least one earlier, I could think of a couple in my head, that I got in them, and 30 minutes later, an hour later, or two hours later, and after hours trading, I'm cashing out, feeling good. But a lot of times you buy them, it's a big leap of faith. You buy a stock on, let's say, a pullback during the day, by the end of the day, you might be ahead several points, and it's like, all right, I got a pretty good position. Or on the flip side, you might be down a little bit, but at least you know where you stand. With something like the buy at B, it takes a leap of faith to close your eyes and buy and to close. And you just have to have a stop in place. Now, let's just start kissing each other just yet. But so far, so good. It's come back. And 19 is my uncle point in this one. I really don't want it to see it go below 19. You can see it's gotten dangerously close. And when it gets dangerously close like that, sometimes I just put in a hard stop and go about my life. PLTR, another one I've been long for a while here, all the way since September. This is a great example of a buy at B that did not trigger 
early, early, early on. It took about a month or so, or more than a month, for it to actually trigger. Day one set the high, so we have to close above that high, too. We've got okay range, 11 down to about 8 and change, so it's a pretty good range. Now, notice it made a new closing high here, but it's below the high of day one. And I know I've shown this example before, but it's just such a great example of drive the point home. We got a new closing high here. This is where I actually bought, and it also extends the range of the stock. The range is beginning to improve. Now, here's another case where I wasn't in the stock very long before it offered me the initial profit target on 100k accounts by a thousand shares or exactly a thousand shares flip out half two points higher and then now we're in longer term trend following mode on that one let's talk about hunting hot ipos as i've said before i use a lot of tools in my analysis and the good folks over at stockcharts.com have been slowly but surely adding a lot of the tools that I use to the stock charts platform. So I want to give them a shout out for that. And I guess not that slow. They've been rolling out a lot of great things. In fact, the plugin, which you'll see a lot of the indicators, there's only a few little indicators I use, but they're in the plugin. And the plugin is free with the caveat. All I ask is that you like this video if you're watching on YouTube, and then you'll get the plugin for free. And if you don't like this video, then go have no fun somewhere else. I'm half kidding. Anyway, so if you go here, IPOs, you can save this to a chart list. And I've already done that. And if I hop over here to the candle glance charts, I can see them really quickly. And a couple of things just to point out real quick, and I'll spend more time going through these next week and, and in subsequent weeks. But it gives me a quick little glance at what's going on. This one here, look at that. It's took off nicely. It pulled back. What is that first Deep retracement, hint, hint, that looks like a mystery chart, doesn't it? Pretty good looking stock. Take a look at Airbnb. Well, this is the Airbnb. What has it done so far? It's absolutely died, okay? It's a turd. <laughs> it wouldn't say price too high, they're gonna die. This is the pre where it's supposed to come public and this is what actually comes public. Then there's no meat left on the bone. Price too high, it's gonna die. So you can see it comes right back in. Plus the it's hard for people to get excited about it. ALGS, I am long this one currently, and I think this was a buy at B back here. ALGM, we just talked about, nice thrust higher, nice pullback. This one's kind of choppy and all over the place. I don't know what the volume is, so that's the next thing we need to do is look at volume, which could be a little tricky in these IPOs. This one, there's nothing there. It's sold off. It's rallied back up. I think I may have traded it back here, a little buy at D right there. You see that? Squint your eyes. You can see it. This one's kind of choppy and sideways. I'd have to do a little more analysis on this, but this is only a one-point range, so it's not as exciting as it looks. This is a higher price one. I guess it did do a first deep retracement here, and now there's nothing to do there. It's pulled back quite a bit. So let's take a look at a few more of these. Let's see if anything catches my eye in these candle glance charts. Again, thanks to the people at Stock Charts for providing that IPO watch list. This is one I played actually lost money in, so I don't want to make it look like all of these always work. It took off, came back in. And I forgot to take partial profits because I was probably chasing some other rabbits. This one looks really good right here. It's taken off. It's pulled back a little bit. In fact, it's on my Landry list for today. This would be a secondary setup. What happened at first, it just died out. So there's nothing to do. But now it's taken off and pulled back. Worth going after. Take a look at DoorDash. Another turd. Look at that. Just coming right back in. Okay. So you kind of get the idea. The candle glance gives you a quick little view of these. You would need to dig a little deeper to make sure you have enough volume to trade them. That's it for this week. I want to thank everybody for watching. Again, if you need some follow-up information, here's the links, davelander.com slash stock charts, and I'll keep you busy for a long time for free. And then hopefully you'll like what you see and stick around. And if you need to reach me, davelander.com slash contact. So I want to thank everybody for watching and may the trend be with you. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.